Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to yet another entry into Mod Madness, the series where we try to, we try multiple different mods for a variety of games. Right now I've so far only tried mods for Civ 5 because you know it has so freaking many of them and it simply expands the game even further to new uh, you know to new vistas I think and uh, I might try other games eventually but so far this one appears to be the most stable when it comes to mods and I'm kind of a noob when it comes to these things but yeah Civ 5 is very easy to apply mods to and uh, yeah this time we're gonna be trying something even more extreme than before uh, last time we played uh, as the Inuit in the Ice Age map uh, including other nations that are perform well in uh, ice and uh, in snowy and tundra environments. This time we're going to be Algeria in Alpha Centauri against a variety of Warhammer uh, civilizations. That's right, you heard me right. Algeria in Alpha Centauri against Warhammer. Now I thought it was a really cool idea to add a bunch of nations from Warhammer into Alpha Centauri so that we can uh, transform this game into something a little bit closer to a sci-fi situation. Uh, and even though Algeria is not exactly sci-fi, it's an actual nation after all, uh, I haven't actually done much research on it. I should have probably read about the leader. Anyways, uh, we're going to be Abdul Qadr, I think Abdul Qadr his name is, the leader of Algeria. Uh, and yeah, these are all the nations we're going to be playing against. Uh, most of them are sci-fi, of course, with the exception of the Seljuk Empire. I thought they might be interesting to add. And as always, the Elder Scrolls Civilization 5 pack. Elder Scrolls, because it adds a distinct flavor to the game. It changes the name of some of the resources, it adds a few extra units here and there, so I thought it would be really cool to have that. And of course, the standard, uh, you know, uh, improvements, overall improvements. The workable mountains, I think, is just excellent. It allows mountains to actually turn into useful tiles, depending on what buildings you have in your uh, in your cities. Uh, and what else? Well, the ice boats, standard. Civ Advanced, of course, adds a bunch of resources to the game. It makes the game a, a little bit more fluid and streamlined overall. Uh, the Aquatic Fortress, another interesting uh, idea actually, it will allow you to build castles in the sea, in the in the ocean. Uh, actually not exactly the ocean, but more like the coastal regions of the map, uh, very close to the coast exactly, and uh, yes you can now build castles in the coast. And finally the ocean cities. So yeah, guess what, You could, in this game, uh, based on the, the bunch of mods I've added, we will now be able to build oceans and fortresses in the sea. So the sea is now much more fun to play in. Uh, even though if we are playing as Algeria, it is very unlikely that we will be using the ocean much. Uh, but nevertheless, this this map, the Alpha Centauri map, has a lot of uh, uh, you know islands and multiple continents, so it should be. Uh, we, we probably have to use the navy eventually. So here we are. He's the first guy, Algeria. Now Algeria has a lot of cool uh, abilities. Uh, very unique. I've, they immediately drew my attention. They're actually one of the few civilizations, one of the few mods, in which uh, you can play with the uh, the honor and piety uh, social policy trees and still do very well because uh, surprisingly they rely on both quite a lot actually and they have their this unique university called the Zawiya uh, it's it's quite complicated actually and they have a unique uh, great general of course which can build a uh, another unique uh, uh, sort of great tile which is a uh, it's called a Kassar which is basically or, or Qasr I think I'm not sure how you pronounce that word, but it, it's a very powerful defensive building uh, or rather tile improvement and here we are map of the planet a habitable planet in the Alpha Centauri system there we are uh, it's going to be large. I will, I will be playing mostly with nine players, I think. Uh, I'm going to try to make this game a little bit shorter than usual because, uh, yeah, I mean, last time we played with, what, 12 nations? It was a huge game. It took a very long time. There was no clear winner until, you know, I was forced to declare war. Uh, actually, there was a couple of civilizations that would have run away with the game. So I think nine players will make the game a little bit shorter overall. I might even reduce this to eight players, if you think about it. Yeah, actually, eight sounds really attractive. You know what, let's keep it at 9, yeah, it's fine. Uh, let's go with the advanced setup for now. Okay, so now we have only 7. We're going to add another one, and another one. There we are. We're going to be playing against, who? let's see, the Seljuks, right off the bat, followed by the Nation of Chaos. Now, by the way, the Nation of Chaos here is actually from the Warhammer, the, the older Warhammer, not the 40k universe, it's the older <laughs> Warhammer universe, yeah. Uh, the one without too much sci-fi, it's more of a fantasy situation. Now the only guys who are from the Warhammer 40k universe are the uh, Imperium, I think. The Imperium, now here we have the Ogres. The Ogres are kind of overpowered, I think, but they should be fine. Uh, what else? Let's see. Ogre. 
Kingdoms, the Iroquois, High Rock, we don't, oh, these are all from the Elder Scrolls universe. The Empire, here we are. Another one from the uh, Warhammer, the old Warhammer universe. I'm sure there's a name for it out there somewhere. You know what, now that I think about it, I'm gonna keep this down to standard because I do want to make this game a little bit shorter than usual. Yeah, let's make it, keep it that way. Uh, the dwarves, of course. There's one left. I don't know where it is. Shoshone, okay, Portugal, Bretonia, there we are. These are all Warhammer 40k uh, civilizations, except the Sel Seljuks. We're gonna be very good in forests. So, uh, standard, expert standard, yeah, okay, complete kills. I think we're all set, ladies and gentlemen, so we should be fine. Now, the, uh, the Algerian nation, they don't have any particular starting bias. Uh, oh, wait, actually, I do want to add another one. They don't have any particular starting bias, so uh, you never know. It, it's really going to be a huge variety of choices when it comes to victory conditions. We can go for science, diplomacy, and even culture, depending on what kind of religion we found. And yes, we are going to be required to find religion, otherwise we're not going to be doing very well. I feel like I missed something. We have Britonia. We have the Empire. The Imperium. Where's the Imperium? They have to be around here somewhere. Imperium, the Imperium, the Imperium. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I played against you. I'm pretty sure you were there. You have to be there. Well, okay, the Imperium is a little bit buggy. It has not appeared. So, we're actually going to be playing against elsewhere. All right, the cat people from the Elder Scrolls universe. There we are. I think that's what they are, yeah. Here go from elsewhere. All right. And we're going to start the game. Now, the game will freeze a little bit for a while, so I'm going to have to edit this part out. You can read the text if you want. Alright, so it looks like we are good to go. Let's see what we get. Alright, so it's an interesting start. Uh, now here's the thing. Like I said, there are no guarantees here. Now, I would have preferred to start next to the mountains because mountains are really important in this map. There are so many mountains here. Uh, we have a Xenofungus Hill. Hmm. Well, on one hand, I'm very tempted to go for the ocean river comp combination, but man, the uh, mountain river ocean combination would be just awesome. But it looks like we're not going to be that lucky this time around. So, uh, yeah, let's go with this. I think it should be fine. There's a lot of sea resources overall, and we still have a lot, plenty of land, so we can found, uh, we can build all of these castles. Or we are gonna need them. Now, I did pick up a lot of, uh, uh, you know, militaristic factions to play against, so that uh, they will be, uh, they are more likely to be attacked in this game, and this will give us plenty of opportunities to test our unique buildings and unique abilities uh, for this particular map, because we are gonna be playing very defensively, I think. Uh, especially at the beginning of the game. Also, we got attacked by the Mindworms. Uh, yeah, so here's something I need to explain about this particular map. Uh, a few terrain modifications. I think the most immediately noticeable is the Xenofungus. Uh, this is a unique terrain uh, type. Uh, basically, if you end your turn on a Xenofungus tile, uh, there is a chance that you might uh, get attacked by these Mindworms. They will deal 10 damage. Or like 10% of your da of your health as damage. I'm not sure. Anyways, yeah, I think it's 10%. There we are. 10 out of 100, and they will give you a slight debuff for 10 turns. Minus 30% combat strength. So overall, I think uh, military units are going to have a very hard time attacking and defending. They're also more vulnerable. They are more likely to die. Um, yeah. So that's how it is. Uh, what else? I feel like I have, there's something I should be mentioning. Yeah, there's also the sea fungus, which is basically the same as xenofungus, but on the sea. And at some point in the game, it will start yielding uh, some like one food and two gold. I'm not sure how, when exactly that happens um, or when exactly it triggers. Yeah, I, I couldn't find the exact technology was, which does this, and I, I guess I wasn't paying attention last time I played through. Uh, yeah, so that's how it goes. All right, uh, first of all, let me explain how Algeria works. Let's uh, check out their civilizations. Here we are, civilization and leaders. Algeria, where's Algeria? Here we are. So, Abdul Qadir. 
عبد القادر الجزائري اوكي سيتيز جين اكسترا ديفنسيف كومبات سترينث بيس اون توتال فيث اوت بوت بير ترن ستراتيجيك ريسورس اون ديزرت بروفايد دبل كوانتيتي ناو <coughs> Unfortunately, there doesn't appear to be any desert nearby, and for some reason, Algier does not have any starting buys near the desert. But f hopefully, <coughs> we will not actually need that. What we do need is to find a religion in order to, um, you know, take early advantage of this situation. I don't really want to. I don't want to have someone else found religion and start and wait for them to spread their religion towards me. No, I want I actually need religion to be a very central part of our overall strategy. Uh, so yeah, we have these. Let's go back to Algeria again. So yeah, uh, having a lot of faith means means your your cities are gonna be extremely difficult to capture. Uh, and furthermore, we have this unique building called the Zawiya uh, or Zawiya. I'm not sure how you pronounce it exactly. For every different terrain type adjacent to the first city it is built, it provides plus one faith, plus five percent great per people generation. So this is a little bit complicated. So you have to pay attention to this one. Uh, basically, it says that. Uh, for every different terrain type near your in near the city in which the zawiya is built for the first time so yeah the city in which th uh, the first zawiya is built uh, so yeah they will take all the terrain types around it and for each different terrain type that uh, the zawiya will give you uh, like plus two faith and like plus five percent people great people generation for all other copies of the zawiya for the rest of the game so basically we have to be very careful where exactly we build that zawiya we need to make sure that there is as big a variety of terrains as possible uh, usually i would prefer to have like uh, say a grassland which is renamed humid here like one grassland one plain hopefully the plains the arids uh, an ocean and the mountain if we can get all these different terrain types in one city at the same time, we, we uh, at least four the four of them. That is going to be the city where we built our first Zoya, and it will be it uh, the bonus will be generalized for the rest of the game. So yeah, it's very complicated, but you need to pay a lot of attention. But it's totally worth it because it's a lot of fun, uh, especially when it comes to you know improving your faith income. And their second uh, unique thing about this sieve is the day. Now this guy is a unique general. Uh, he may construct a Xar instead of a citadel. Uh, it is just the same as a citadel, of course, but it can be built outside friendly borders. It means I think you, it means you can build even in enemy territory. I haven't actually tested that, but it would be interesting. I mean, if you are in the middle of a war and you basically build this uh, Xar in the middle of an enemy territory, you have you pretty much have a permanent launch pad against their city. That it's insanely powerful, and uh, it inflicts more damage to nearby units than a citadel. I've tested this and it actually inflicts like 50 damage per turn for all units that end. Yeah, so 50 damage per turn, that is incredible. Uh, and we will be getting a lot of these guys. Uh, for one thing, uh, if you build defensive buildings like walls and such, they will actually start generating uh, great generals f for you. So yeah, that's an interesting dynamic. It means this is actually one of the few saves where building walls is extremely useful. So we want to explore, we want to find some ruins as early as we can, so we can actually uh, pop out a religion, hopefully. I feel like our production is not as high as we should it should be. Hmm. Where do we go next? There's a lot of Zeon fungus there, I was hoping to avoid them. Alright, so this is a little bit better, we have some humids. By the way, humid means grassland, arid means plains, and I think barren means desert. I think that's how the uh, tiles style situation goes in this game. I have not been able to find any snow or indeed any tundra in this game yet. I mean, it would be interesting to find them, but uh, thankfully we're not playing as tundra civilizations this time around. Yeah, we really have to avoid these, these zero fungus for now, because they actually cost like two or three movement points to get across them, so yeah, that's really annoying. And it looks like we have our next city location. Now here's the plan. I do want to build a monument followed by the shrine. So once we have the shrine complete, we will just add the shrine to the... the uh, city screen provides a thank you very much. We're going to add the shrine here to the queue and then we'll just switch them up so that the production for the monument is not lost. I think that should be great. Uh, th thankfully, we are growing quite fast because of the whales. 
Oh, there's our first city-state. Having a little bit of gold early on is extremely useful. Start buying things. Now, concerning culture, I will most likely be going for some honor and piety, which means we're going to... Uh, for obvious reasons, I mean, you, if you can get, uh, if you complete the honor tree, you can buy great generals whenever you want. You can just start grabbing tiles from everyone. Uh, you don't even need to declare war. You can just pretty much take away any tile you desire and connect the luxury resources inside that tile anytime you want. So yeah, it's uh, really cool to have, I think, uh, a lot of <laughs> a lot of great generals, especially an early one, which will protect us against uh, invaders eventually. And of course, piety, we absolutely need that. In, in fact, I'm actually going to start with this, plus one faith from shrine and temples, and we're going to try to pump out an early city to help us along. Alright, Felita there. And our first rain. Let us pray. Let us pray that this is going to be our uh, first religion pop. If we can get some faith from this, that would be just amazing. The Thieves Guild. I think this is from the Elder Scrolls. Okay, we found a... Oh, this is probably the worst imaginable. This is probably the worst one you can think of. It's basically the, the map. However, we have a ruin there, and we have two wonders right next to each other. So, wow, this is actually very tempting. Um, so if we still settle a city here somewhere, we can gain both. And eventually, we can, when we found our pantheon, we can have like... I don't remember exactly which belief it was. I think it was one with nature. Plus four faith from all wonders. Yeah, that, that's actually very attractive at this point. Hmm, so what do we want to go for next? We already have faith. We could go for some iron or we could reveal a couple of luxury resources. I think the iron is useful. The horses are useful as well. Hmm. You know what? I'll be going for this followed by the iron this will give us a boost to our production hopefully they will find them somewhere within these tiles although we're not going to be needing a lot of horses i don't think so oh yeah the shrine of course prioritize that we need to found religion at any cost and you can see these really cool labels Eurition Eurish, bay how would you pronounce that I'm gonna be honest, I have not played Alpha Centauri, so, oh crap. Okay, so here's another interesting thing about this map. The Barbarians have been replaced with these guys, basically a, uh, I think it's called a worm? What's it called? Spore launcher, alright, so this is a spore launcher. Uh, kind of reminds me of the, uh, I think they used the, uh, the Dune model from, the worm model from the Dune series. Yeah, I think somewhere out there there's probably a mod for the Dune worms. So apparently somebody has met them before because we gained 15 gold for meeting them. So I think our rival is very ne close to us. Hmm. We have to keep an eye out. Oh, there we are. Bretonia. Uh, the picture is a little bit fuzzy, but uh, yeah, these are indeed the, Dr the Br Bretonians. Uh, they're actually making more gold than I am, which is strange. I'm going to try to block their path and try to acquire this. So this is unfortunate. It looks like the Bretonians are much closer to these wonders than I am. So yeah, it looks like we have a good reason to declare war on these guys eventually. So if we want to take these two cities. Unless we can pump out an early settler and try to take it away first. But it's quite far away. Look at that. It's going to be very difficult to defend in case they decide to actually attack me. Oh, come on. Give me some religion. Ah. Oh. We can add another scout because we have our first free unit. Free archer. I think we've explored this area sufficiently. We're going to try to stay away from these guys. Uh, try to explore areas that they are avoiding. Or, yeah, I'm assuming this is their only unit so far. So, yeah, if we explore in that direction, we will hopefully come across some ruins which they have not found. And there should be a couple of ruins in the islands, I guess. Oh, come on, give me some ruins. Really? Skyhaven. Lovely. Gain some 8 faith from those. How much faith do we need? Actually, if we find another religious city, city-state, we should probably gain a 
couple of faith, which should be enough to found our religion. Yeah, so let's keep exploring, I guess. Hmm. I think I'm overextending my exploration there, but I desperately need some goodie huts. I'm assuming the Bretonians are somewhere here. Yeah, there they are. You can see their tile there. So yeah, clearly they are much closer to... Actually, yeah, they're, they're much closer to the Wonders than I am. So it looks like we're gonna miss that. Which means they're probably gonna be overpowered. They're gonna have a huge advantage when it comes to faith and all that. Oh hey, we have some jungles. Bizarrely enough, jungles are apparently overpowered in this game. Yeah, uh, in this particular map, three food. Which might explain why they are so rare. Whoever starts the game in the jungles, they're gonna be super powerful for the rest of the game. They're gonna have a lot of food. Alright, so these are the ogres. Look at this face. One of the ugliest things you've ever seen. Oh, so they started in the actual jungle. Okay, this might explain why the ogres are always really powerful in every game I play. Ah uh, yes, indeed, that's what's happening. So apparently these guys, they always start in uh, in the jungle and they have access to this monsoon jungle wonder here, which gives them plus 10 happiness and very fast regeneration. Yeah, they're gonna be, they will probably get away with the game. Which makes me tremble. Come on, give me something, what the hell's going on? Oh god. Okay, if this one is a faith city, that would that would be nice. Unless of course someone else already spoke to them or something. No, it's a maritime city. And or somebody else already spoke to them. Okay, we're not we're uh we're getting rather unlucky so far. We are not this game is not going as I planned. Alright. Oh, we can find a Pantheon. Excellent. So, we have a lot of good choices. Uh, I want something that will increase our faith income. We don't have Dance of the Aurora because there are no Tundra. There is no Tundra nearby whatsoever. And the barren regions are very far away. I probably should have started the, restarted the game somehow. But, uh, and yeah, we have no Wonders nearby, which means we cannot get the... From Natural Wonders, yeah, this one, the one, one with nature, originally. Yeah, it's going to be a very tough choice. Hmm. Yeah, Desert Folklore is not going to work either. For each gold and silver, there's no gold and silver nearby. No stone quarries whatsoever. We have no, like, you know, uh, what's it called? Marble and stone. Faith from soul gems and pearls, we don't have that either. So, yeah, it's a rather difficult start. But... Yeah, man, there are really very few choices here. So I'm going to go with this one. Increase our culture slightly, and we are going to be building a bunch of shrines. I mean, I suppose it's better than nothing. It means we are going to be forced to fund a lot of cities and make sure we have shrines everywhere. So it will increase our uh, faith income and our culture income as well. Another wonder? Seriously? Man, these Bretonians are gonna have access to so many freaking wonders. Good, so we're the first to meet them. That is good to know. Yeah, this is not a good start at all. I was actually hoping for a little bit more. Alright, uh, let's go for piety right away. We have already built a shrine though. So now we need to acquire 200. It's going to take forever. Uh. Let's explore the other lands, see what, they are, what they're up to. So as soon as we're done with the scout, we're going immediately for a... Man, I would really like to build a settler. 
Looks like I'm gonna have to save some money before we can build that thing. Let's go for a granary. Oh, there we are. Another ruin. Somebody was attacked by Mind Wars. I think it was these guys, yeah. Thankfully, they are healing a double... A double speed. I'm kind of worried about the Arsenium. They appear... They're, they're probably going to be our biggest rivals. Is that a river or a territory? I can't really tell. So if I want to explore, do I go there? I think this is the end of the continent. Beyond the jungles, there is nothing else. I played this game before, and I think, yeah, that's pretty much the extent of the uh, of the map. That would be their capital, as far as I... Okay, 100 gold, not bad. This would uh, it will make it a little bit easier for us to buy our first settler. If we can find another one like that, oh, that would be interesting. Oh crap, these guys can actually kill me in one hit. Now the barbarians, uh, they come in two varieties. They're either worms, three actually, th worms, locusts, or uh, what else? I think there was like a sea type, some kind of s giant squid or something. Yeah. So these are, th these are the main three types. And they're extremely powerful. They actually get stronger over the ages without having any advanced technology or stuff like that. Okay, so we're actually already surrounded by them, so... We might lose that uh, particular archer, unless we can somehow escape. If they start chasing me, we are in big trouble. Oh, thank god. Okay, so they're nowhere nearby. Good. We're gonna try to hide behind these mountains somehow. I'll take that later. I'm not in my... There's no hurry for that. Gonna smash those barbarians. Yeah, they're barely taking any damage there. They're quite strong. I probably should have uh, increased the uh, combat speed because, uh, yeah, these guys... They, there's a, a little bit of lag every time we attack them. It's uh, kind of strange. I've never had this happen before. Alright. Yeah, see that? It's a very laggy situation there. And it only happens with the barbarians, as far as I know. Oh. Was that a hill? It's a river. So uh, it looks like we've pretty much explored the entire continent. I don't think there's anything else to explore there. Hmm. Well, we still have these guys as, as defense. I suppose we can start uh, killing, uh, you know, the Xenos, uh, the aliens, perhaps. Especially if the city states actually start demanding to, uh, for us to kill them. Oh come on, just die. Yeah, these guys took some damage from the barbarians right away. Have some of that. Come on. So, plus one faith. Yes, of course, that's what I want. We gain plus one, plus one faith per turn now. We're up to plus two. And eventually, I think... Once we found the religion, we're going to continue all the way down towards the religious tolerance and finding the reformation. So now the reformation is much easier to acquire thanks to the loss of... There used to be a link between these two, but now it's just gone. So next thing, I'm going to go for honor, I think, because every time we kill a barbarian, we gain some culture from them, which is quite useful. Especially in the early game, I guess. Oh crap, these guys are here now. How am I gonna escape these bastards? Shit, okay.
I think we can. I think we can kill them. Should I wait for the culture pop before I kill them, or should I just? You know what? Let's just kill them. There's gonna be plenty of other opportunities to kill other barbarians. We should be fine. Yeah, this battle is taking forever. Just kill this bastard. <sighs> Finally. All right, so we've uncovered a lot of territory there. Also, we've acquired both the horses and the irons, and we have not. We don't have any horse or iron within our territory. Oh, okay, so there's barely one, like, yeah. And apparently, there's a single iron there. Usually, you could see it, uh, it would be written like two iron or four. This time, it's only one. Which means this is a very shitty continent. Yep, this is a shitty continent indeed. There are no horses either. Anyway. There's a salter in there. Uh, so what kind of resources do we have? We have maize and all these. Okay, you know what? I think it's time to reveal this. If we can build the Stonehenge, that would be interesting. We're going to follow that up with the archery. And, of course, the sailing. And, yes, we need a lot of gold. So, actually, this one is very important. All right. So how are we supposed to escape those xenomorphs? Kiev is under attack. I will start attacking the xenomorphs as soon as I can find them and strike them from a distance. I will start with the ones, obviously, the ones closest to my city. But I do want to explore this area first. Oh, so there they are. And it's fortunate that uh, the warrior is there already. So I might actually use this archer and the warrior to destroy this one in particular. Although I do want to make sure that we have the honor policy first. We could also involve the scout in this battle, I suppose. Yeah, that would be interesting. But first, oh, there's another iron there. That's nice. So you can see there are plenty of opportunities for us to steal land from other nations. I mean, if we found a city anywhere, we could just use our Khazar and uh, just uh, take both cities, right? Uh, you know, take a couple of resources from them. I'm assuming that Valletta is going to try to acquire the salt. Eventually, I can just build a castle here and just take all these tiles and take away the salt from them. And as far as I know, I think I can even build it on their own territory. We can steal a lot of land this way. It's insane. Okay, you have great engineer. I think I might let you heal this turn. You know what, I don't think the scout needs to be involved. We can pretty much use these guys and they'll be fine. The warrior, of course, is going to lo lose a lot of health attacking this particular worm thingy. And we are barely dealing da any damage whatsoever. Yep, this sucks. Oh boy, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, all right. we need to take a step back there. It's a little too many xenomorphs. Uh, I think they're called. I'm gonna call them xenomorphs because, I mean, that's what they were called back in uh, Pandora. Yeah, let's get the hell out of there. We're gonna start killing these guys first. I'm gonna have to position my troops like somewhere over here, perhaps, and start sniping them. Now the worms, as far as I know, they cannot. The spore launchers, rather, they cannot. Uh, move but they can du duplicate themselves they can start spawning others of their kind and soon if you don't kill them soon they will like have a huge fortress here and like really control the area which kind of sucks you know what i'm gonna keep them there for now uh you guys can just uh, hang out yeah just uh, stay there for a while 
If the locusts attack, decide to go after my archers, I will just uh, use my warriors to block them. Oh, fine. Alright, take it. So we haven't. We still haven't revealed any resources. What the hell is going on? This game is rather unlucky. Oh, so we have some horses there. Great. And we have discovered a barbarian encampment. Oh boy, the scout is gonna get it get its ass kicked if you attack them right away. We're gonna need some archers there. It looks like. And so far it looks like the archer is taking forever to just uh, kill this one particular worm. I'm gonna try to attack. Thankfully these guys can heal at double rate, so I think they should be able to uh, restore their health rather fast. Yeah. I just hope they don't kill me in one hit or something. Alright, start healing yourself. I think they will gain like 20 health points every turn. 